Hello and welcome to our second section in chapter two for um, our proof-based unit, conditional statements. Go ahead and copy this down, pause the video if needed. Same thing for the title, conditional statements. Okay, we're gonna learn what a conditional statement as well as the converse, inverse, and contrapositive of those statements are. So uh, let's jump into it. A conditional statement. And this is often going to be noted with the letter P. A conditional statement. I'm going to put this in parentheses P and then like a colon because it's like a statement. It's like, um, it's, you'll see what I mean. Is a statement. A statement. Written in the form if then. Written in the if then form okay so you could always you could always say something like you live in chicago um oh, so here's your statement if you live in chicago then you live in illinois so that's our first example if you live in chicago live in Chicago, then you live in Illinois. Okay, so here's the if, comma, then. So it's it, it, it's uh, the it's uh, based off of um, the condition that you live in Chicago results the fact that you live in Illinois. Now this is can be true. It could also be false and we break it down by hypotheses and conclusion. The P statement um, is this part, the if. We call this the P. Sorry, let's put this P here. And then this would be called, we could also call this the hypothesis. So this is your hypothesis, the if. We ultimately conclude Q or the conclusion that if you live in Chicago, that's your hypothesis, then you live in Illinois, okay? So there's a lot of different ways to write this in terms of notation. So the notation should look like this. Notation will look like this. P and then an arrow, Q. This is if, if, then, if P, then Q. It could also be written if P, this is how it would re read if P, then Q. So that's saying if the hypothesis happens, here's your hypothesis again, if you live in Chicago, then we conclude that you live in Illinois. Then Q happens. You could also write that P implies Q. If P happens, then for sure Q happens, if it's a true statement. Okay? The converse. A converse statement is a statement made by switching the hypothesis and conclusion. And conclusion. Okay, so in this case, it's not gonna be if P then Q anymore, but it's gonna be if Q then P. What would this look like for the statement up above? Well, if we're gonna take that the same statement from up above, I put from above, we're gonna say, if you live in Illinois, So that was our conclusion for before. Then you live in Chicago. You live in Chicago. And we know that this is not true because just because you live in Illinois doesn't mean you live in Chicago. It's, um, it can be false. Your converse statement can be false, okay? So we see that the Q statement is now flipped around this is your Q, 
based off of the, per, the original statement, this is the p-value, now they're in different positions. So that's the, the conditional statement and the converse. The inverse, an inverse statement states that um, it is the negation of the original statement. The negation of the original conditional statement. Okay. What that means is the negation, if you remember, means not. We also use the symbol the tilde. Okay. And that means we're going to do. It, we're going to take that original statement, P implies Q. Well, this is your conditional. And it turns into not P implies not Q. So what will this look like in terms of an example? Well, this will read, if you, oops, if you, so we can take a look at the original statement. If you live in Chicago, then you live in Illinois. We're going to take, take this part. If you do not live in Chicago, then you do not live in Illinois. Live, if you do not live in Chicago, then you do not live in Illinois. live in Illinois. Ooh, running out of room. Okay? And notice that we're using the word not in both. And last but not least, if we have the contrapositive the contrapositive statement is as follows. It is the negation of the converse. So we talked about this, the converse two statements ago. When we switch P and Q, now it's Q then P. So we know that the converse is Q implies P or Q then P. So we're going to take not Q. Sorry, I probably should have put that. The contrapositive is not Q then not P. What this would look like is you would take this statement, if you live in Illinois, then you live in Chicago, but put the word, if you do not live in Illinois. If you do not live in Illinois, then you do not live in Chicago. If you really think about that, that's actually a true statement. If you do not live in Illinois, there's no way you could live in Chicago, okay? And if you notice, the conditional statement was true, the contrapositive was also true, but the converse statement was false, and the inverse statement was also false. And these are actually paired off. So we can make this little note here. The conditional and the contrapositive are always the same, truth value. In terms of truth values, so I'm going to put truth values. Wow, that was a terrible U. In terms of truth values, the contra, the, the conditional, whatever the conditional is, whether it's true or false, is always e equal to the contrapositive, no matter what. A kind of nice little cheat sheet. The same thing for, goes for the contra, the converse and the inverse. The converse is always going to be equal to the inverse. Because if you also look closely here, like I said, these are also false statements. Just because you don't live in, Illinois, in Chicago doesn't mean you can't live in Illinois. So these are also paired off. The way I personally like to remember this is if you look, the verses are the same. The converse and inverse both have verse in it. These have the same truth value. 
So if what I'm saying by this is if the conditional is true, then by default, the contrapositive has to be true. If the converse is false, then the inverse has to be false or vice versa. Okay? We'll talk about more about this uh, with some practice in class. If you do have any questions, please let me know, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.